Hey guys, it is nonfiction November coming up and these are some recommendations that I wanted to give you that were more like along the lines of self-help, um, new skills, those kinds of things. So I will be doing several of these recommendation videos, but I wanted to split them up in the kind of categories to kind of help. So first up is The Power of Habit, Why We Do What We Do in Life and in Business by Charles Duhigg. I actually did a whole seminar uh, <laughs> for a camp on based on the things that I learned from this book and a few others because it was really, really good. It talks about why our brains decide to keep habits, why we dump habits, and it gives you a lot of practical hacks and tips on how to change habit forming or to break bad habits. And I thought that was a really cool thing. I think pretty much everybody has a habit that they are trying to get rid of or start. I don't think I'm alone in that. <laughs> so it's a good book. I would definitely recommend it. The second one is The Kitchen Counter Cooking School by Kathleen Flynn. And I'm actually going to reread this this month. It's a really quick read. There's several good recipes in it as well. I know she's good on audio, but uh, this is really kind of a cool thing because it's got the recipes and I'd rather have it in hardback uh, form for that. She learned to cook in, Fer in Paris. In in Ferris. It's been a long week <laughs> in Paris. And when she got back, she ran into a lot of people who didn't know these basic skills that she thought could really transform people's uh, habits in the kitchen. And um, she changed how they shopped, how they used spices. And I think she has a lot of really good practical tips for someone who, even if they are um, pretty competent in the kitchen, it gives you some good inspiration. Uh, and also there's um, some things on saving money, which we are a family of five <laughs> on one income, so I appreciated that as well, uh, is, is getting rid of processed things, eating healthfully, but also not breaking the bank doing it. So it's a really good recommendation. The third one is Courage to Start by John the Penguin Bingham. Cool. And this book is actually about running, but it's more than just about running, and I love that. Uh, I have not always been a physical fitness uh, person <laughs> by any means. And I don't think I'm still like all that great on that now. However, I have found some things that I enjoy and running happens to be one of them, even though I'm not doing an awesome job of that lately. He has the nickname the penguin because when he started running, he waddled like a penguin. But I love that he, he tells you, you can be a, a runner. If you decide to be a runner, you can be a dancer. If you decide to be a dancer, it has nothing to do with what other people look at you and see. It has to do with what you see in yourself. And I think this has some really good practical tips on starting running, but it also was a really cool read to inspire you to think of yourself as whatever you wanted to think yourself as. And I think that's a lesson that I have to keep learning. <laughs> so I, and it's, again, it's really pretty short. I think it's only around, yeah, it's less than 200 pages. So I, I've recommended this several times and I've read it a lot of times. The next one is Daring Greatly. And it, this one's by Brené Brown. I think I've talked about this one before. It's about vulnerability and how it can change our, our life in being courageous. A lot of times we think of brave people as, fearless as people who have no flaws. That's not what being brave is. Being brave is doing something that's terrifying because you think you're supposed to. I think I probably read this book maybe a couple months before I started booktube, if that gives you some indication as to me trying to be brave and do things that are out of my comfort zone. This had a lot of great information on what makes people hesitate on being brave and how you can choose in your own life to make those choices, even if they're little ones on being brave and what, what an impact it can have on you. So I really highly recommend this book as well. Um, Brené Brown, she is brilliant. I, I love any of the books that she's written. Um, but Daring Greatly, I think is one of my favorite ones. The next one is a little bit more fun. It's Come As You Are, the, and it's about female sexuality by Emily Nagoski. Unlocking, yeah, the science of sex. And I appreciate this for a lot of reasons. Uh, and I've actually, I think, recommended it before. It's going to be one of my favorite nonfiction reads this year. I think as women, we don't get as much information on our bodies growing up. And that needs to change. I, I love that she really breaks it down. But my favorite thing about the book is that it doesn't matter what kind of person you are you are normal and she is very good about highlighting that in her book. It doesn't matter what you like or what you don't like, she helps you figure out how to express that to your partner, how to understand it yourself, 
and I learned so much. I've given this uh, as gifts. I will be giving it as gifts in the future. It's a really, really, really important one if you are a female or you love a female. So yeah, uh, a lot of the population, <laughs> not all of the population, but a lot of it could really benefit from it. The last one I wanted to recommend, I just finished this month and it's Super Better by Jane McGonigal. She did a TED talk on game theory and how it can change your life and make it better. And Super Better was really, really fun. It, I think, again, I copied down half of the book in my notebook trying to remember it all. She gives you very practical skills, quests, those kinds of things to encourage you to, to go out and make your life like a game. And we like games in our family. I think you probably know that from hearing a bit about us. But uh, sometimes it is hard to take everyday life that is mundane and ordinary and make it fun. And she gives some really practical examples of how to do that. Uh, again, if you don't read the book, at least check out her TED Talk because it was awesome. So those are my recommendations. Um, so far, I'll be doing more videos in the future on different categories, but those are some good ones for self-help or new skills if you're wanting to get started. So talk to you guys later. Bye.